And the line of reasoning of this contagion theory, as I would frame it, goes something like this. War, revolution, natural disaster, governmental misrule produces great distress. And that distress breeds radicalism, leads to unrest, and potentially violence. And consequently, Hoover was deeply concerned that World War I and other chronic problems overseas would produce radicalism, produce violence, produce instability, and perhaps even encourage populations that are beleaguered by famine and other difficulties to embrace political pathologies like communism. And he was not alone. President Woodrow Wilson, channeling Hoover, uh, would state, hunger does not breed reform, it breeds madness. And therein lies that kernel of the idea of the contagion, that in order to arrest the spread of disaster, American aid needed to be injected. If we were to use a medical metaphor, an injection, an inoculation so to, to cure uh, these ailments. And in the short term, it might hurt, but in the long term, uh, you'd receive greater protection. Now, the essence of Hoover's thinking in World War I and actually in World War II, in, a, in essence, was this. If you give a man bread, he won't turn red. <laughs> now, it didn't turn out so well in Soviet Russia, uh, for Hoover, at least, in the 1920s. But his confidence in this formula of American aid provides a baseline of stability so that prosperity can be achieved. 